Okay, now let's imagine that you are a nerve cell living on the brain city and you are under complete curfew. So you are not allowed to leave the brain and go shopping for your essential material. However, you do need food, you, need, you do need oxygen, right? And who's going to deliver these substances for you? Who's going to provide you with the oxygen that you need? Yes, that's our delivery man in the body, the blood. So the blood is going to bring all the essential material to the cell and it's going to take the waste. For example, carbon dioxide is a waste. The blood is going to take this waste into the excretory organs that is in charge of eliminating the waste outside the body. So we said you need oxygen. The blood is going to provide you with oxygen. And where would the oxygen come from? Of course, from the lungs. So the blood is going to go to the lungs, it's going to take the oxygen from the lungs, and it's going to get rid of the carbon dioxide. And how does this exchange process take place? To know that, we need to review the diffusion. As you know, diffusion is the movement of particles from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration. So if I have here high concentration of oxygen, and here I have low concentration of oxygen, oxygen will flow from high concentration to low concentration. Keep that in mind as we explain gas exchange inside the lungs. So we said that the gas exchange process takes place inside the lungs. Now, if I want to be more specific, where exactly in the lungs would the process take place? It happens at the level of the alveoli. Remember these microscopic sacs? At the level of the alveoli, I'm going to have the gas exchange process. I'm going to explain that in a minute, but let's talk a little bit more about the alveoli. Now, this is an alveolus. As you can see that the walls of the alveolus are very thin. Actually, the walls of the alveoli are only one cell thick. And since they are thin, it will make the exchange process easier, right? Also, the alveoli, they have a very large surface area. So if you are going to... Um, expand the all the alveoli into a flat surface then you're going to have an area that is bigger than most classroom so as we said the alveoli they have a very thin wall and they have a very large surface area and that of course will enable the gas exchange to happen at a faster rate okay now how would this gas exchange process take place so this is the alveoli, this is an alveolus, and this is the capillary, the blood vessel. So here I have the alveolus, and here I have the blood vessel or the capillaries that contains blood. Now when you breathe in, the air that is rich with oxygen is going to enter the alveolus, right? Now inside the alveolus, I will have a high concentration of oxygen gas. So how would the oxygen gas move? It will move from the high concentration area, which is inside the alveolus, into the blood vessels, right? And then the red blood cells are going to take this oxygen. Now, on the other hand, remember that the Blood vessels carry the carbon dioxide from the cells. So the capillaries, the blood vessels, they contain a higher concentration of carbon dioxide. So how would the carbon dioxide diffuse? Correct. Carbon dioxide is going to diffuse now from the area of higher concentration, which is inside the blood vessel, into the alveolus. Now, when you exhale, the carbon dioxide is going to go out. So again, the blood 
is going to drop carbon dioxide and pick up the oxygen. See, this is the blood. It is dropping the carbon dioxide and taking in the oxygen. This is, or these are alveoli surrounded by capillaries and blood is going to take oxygen from the alveoli and give carbon dioxide. Now, every time you breathe, actually, the alveoli enable your body to take billion of molecules of oxygen and get rid of billions of molecules of carbon dioxide. I would say more than billions, actually. Now, how do your body know when to breathe? You may ask me, what kind of questions is that? My body is breathing all the time, right? It's an involuntary process. However, it's still controlled by the brain. Every activity in our body is controlled by the brain. Now, how would the brain control this process? You know that the cells are doing their cellular respiration and producing carbon dioxide, right? Now, carbon dioxide is going to build up in the blood, and then the nervous system is going to signal the lungs to exhale in order to get rid of this carbon dioxide. And after each exhalation, you are going to inhale, right? So, again, it's controlled by the nervous system. Breathing is controlled by the nervous system. When the concentration of the carbon dioxide increases in the blood, the nervous system is going to signal the respiratory system to get rid of this carbon dioxide. And that's why you're going to exhale. And then you are going to inhale to get oxygen. Now, how does this happen? And by how does this happen, I will be talking about the respiration mechanism. What happens during exhalation? What happens during inhalation? Now, exhalation is breathing out. Inhalation is breathing in. And I'll be talking about the mechanism here. So, breathing mechanism and hello, Boyle's Law. Now, would you please stop nagging about why do we have to study chemistry in biology lesson and pay attention to me. So, stop nagging and pay attention. Do you remember what is Boyle's Law? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You took that in chemistry. I know. So, Boyle's Law is the relation between volume and the pressure, right? You know that as volume increases, pressure will decrease. So let's say that I have here, this is a, a lung model. So this is a plastic bottle and here I have a balloon. Now here I have an elastic membrane. So if I'm going to pull this elastic membrane down, like in this adjacent picture, the volume is going to increase, right? The volume is going to increase when I pull the membrane down. And as volume increases what happens to pressure pressure is going to decrease so as volume increases the pressure inside the bottle here is going to decrease now the pressure outside the bottle is going to be higher and as you know things are going to move from an area of higher pressure to the area of lower pressure so when the volume inside this bottle increases, the pressure is going to decrease. Now, the pressure inside the bottle will be less than the pressure outside the bottle. So that's why the air is going to move from the area of a higher pressure into the area of a lower pressure. Now, let's explain that using lungs. Let's do this together. I want you to put your hands on your chest and breathe in and out. And if you stand in front of a mirror and check what happens as you breathe in and you breathe out, that would be great. So put your hands on your chest, take a deep breath in, breathe out. Now what happens when you breathe in? Maybe you notice that. Now, we have 
um, at the end of the lungs, we have a muscle called the diaphragm. Now, this muscle, when you breathe in, it's going to contract. So as it contracts, it's going to move down. And as it moves down, the volume inside your rib cage is going to increase. So look at this one. This is the diaphragm. See how it goes down. When it goes down, the volume increases. When it goes up, the volume decreases. So as it contracts, it's going to go down. So the volume is going to increase. As it relaxes, it's going to go up and the volume is going to decrease. Now let's do it again. Again, I want you to put your hands at your uh, chest, okay? If you can, put them down um, at this area here so that you can feel the muscle beneath your rib cage and take a deep breath. Inhale. Now, as you notice, you can feel it, right? You can feel that your chest cavity is expanding. When you breathe in, the diaphragm is going to contract. As it contracts, it's going to move down. And that will give more space. Your chest cavity is going to expand, so you're going to have a larger volume here. And again, remember, we said that the volume is going to increase and thus the pressure inside your chest is going to decrease so the air is going to go in air rushes into your lungs that's during inhalation when you breathe in now take a deep breath again and i want you to breathe out now please as you breathe out just look carefully to what happens to your chest, okay? So, exhale, breathe out. Now, did you notice how your chest cavity decreases in volume? So, when you exhale during exhalation, the diaphragm is going to relax. As it relaxes, it's going to reduce the space around the lungs. So that's why you can, you can sense it, actually. You can see it if you are standing in front of a mirror that your chest is going to become smaller in volume. And smaller volume means higher pressure, right? So the air pressure inside your lungs is going to increase and that's the air is going to go out. And this process here is exhalation. So during exhalation, your diaphragm is going to relax the volume of the chest cavity is going to decrease that's why the pressure inside your chest and thus your lungs is going to increase and the air is going to move out so inhalation exhalation inhalation Exhalation. See what happens to the size of your chest cavity? Now keep in mind that the diaphragm is a smooth muscle. So this muscle contracts and relaxes in order to help in breathing. We also have uh, muscles at the um, uh, rib cage, and these muscles are going to contract in order to. Uh, help in breathing. So when these muscles contract, the rib cage is going to move up, and when they relax, the rib cage is going to move down. Now let's do this. I want you to uh, pause the uh, video for a while, and then I want to jump for ten times, and then go rushing to the kitchen for back and forth for five times, run quickly but safely. I will pause recording myself and I'm going to do it. So don't be lazy, jump and run. <sighs> Let me hold my breath. Welcome back. Breathing, fa breathing faster, huh? Okay. Now, remember what we said before that 
as the level of carbon dioxide increases in the blood, the nervous system is going to signal the body to breathe out faster or to exhale faster. So what happens when you exercise? When you exercise, your muscles are contracting faster, right? So that's why the cellular respiration will happen at a faster rate. This means that more carbon dioxide is produced. Carbon dioxide is produced at a higher rate and the blood is taking this carbon dioxide. Therefore, your brain is going to signal the respiratory system to breathe faster. So the brain is going to signal the respiratory system, the lungs to go and inhale or and exhale at a faster rate in order to get rid of the carbon dioxide at the same time to provide these cells with oxygen. Now, actually, this is one example of how respiratory system maintains homeostasis. Now, the, uh, remember that the body wants to maintain constant internal conditions. When the concentration or the amount of carbon dioxide increases in the body, the respiratory system is going to get rid and remove this carbon dioxide. Now, this happens, of course, with the help of the circulatory system. I mean, all these systems are working together in order to maintain constant internal conditions. So, for example, when you are exercising, your muscles are contracting faster, more carbon dioxide is produced, the heart is going to pump blood faster in order to go to the lungs and take in oxygen and get rid of the carbon dioxide. And this will help your body to maintain homeostasis or constant internal conditions. I hope that you got it. Now I want you to stop for a while and answer these questions. Go back to the PowerPoint and the video to check if your answers are correct. If you have any question, please make sure to contact your teachers for more clarification. In part three of this lesson, we will be explaining infection that affects the respiratory system. Stay safe.